my gosh. Hello and welcome back to Bites of History with Irene Walton. I'm your host, Irene Walton. It feels like forever since I have said that. Have you ever wondered how it made it to your table? Have you ever wondered how it made it to your shelf? If you love food, then this is the show for you. Bites of History with Irene. It has been a minute and a half since we got to record an episode. And it's such a bummer because I was like, I'm so excited for this three-part series. And then I did one part and I haven't continued it. But today we are. And if I'm being honest, I am recording this on a Monday. I don't know if I'll have time to get it up by Tuesday, but I'm going to get it up as soon as possible. So if it comes out on a Wednesday or a Thursday, my apologies for the lateness, but it's already been like three weeks late anyway. What are you going to do? Okay, today we are continuing our part two of weird state food laws. And I am just blown away by the amount of support I got on the last episode. I'm so happy to hear that other people like weird stuff like this, like I do. Um, But I'm also, to be, if I'm being honest, I'm not surprised. Like, I feel like this is one of those things that everybody kind of likes to learn about. I actually had one of my little clips from the podcast do like really well on Instagram Reels. So thank you for all the support there. Maybe we can get two in a row. Who knows? Because some of these laws are super weird as well. Let's get into it. I want to thank all of my patrons for, oh my gosh, the amount of support that they have shown in the past month or so has been unparalleled. You guys, I got COVID this last month. It was the first time in, I don't even know how long that I had it. Uh, Cause I've had, it, I think two or three times, but It was just a nightmare because I've been working doubles at a breakfast restaurant and then at a bar. And it has just been really taking a toll on me, like getting up at 530 in the morning and not getting home until like 330, 4 in the morning the next day. So it it was a lot. Um, And I think my body was just not having it. And shut down on me, uh, rightfully so. So I took care of it. I took care of me. And I'm feeling a million times better And my patrons were just so understanding about live streams that got canceled or moved or changed. And I am so grateful for it. If you guys would like to be a part of such a supportive, wonderful community, (laughs) you can go check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Irene Walton. Thank you so much to everybody in there. It is such a treat to have you all truly. Thank you. Um, And of course, thank you to my sources. We have a ton of sources this time around too. So thank you so much to tasteofhome.com, delish.com, the the Louisville, I know how to say it, the Louisville Cardinal.com, explorekentuckylake.com, just, no, I'm sorry, law.justia.com, masslive.com, whitelawpllc.com, legislature.mi.gov, stupidlaws.com, golflive.com, dailynebraskan.com. Thank you all so much. I could not have done this episode without you. And to start off where we left off last time, we are going to start with the dumbest, weirdest, craziest food laws in Kentucky. In Kentucky, it is illegal to go fishing with a bow and arrow, which I didn't know was a thing that needed a law, but apparently it is. Some actual really cool facts. Um, Only specialized fishermen can go with this. So like a special type of fisherman you can be can use, they're called bow fishermen, can hunt with the weapon. And you can also only catch 15 catfish a day or two paddlefish. So there are like restrictions on the amount that you can fish. And Kentucky also has the ice cream cone law that we talked about in last uh, month's episode about Alabama with the ice cream cone in your back pocket. It turns out a lot of the states have this one, which I think is so funny. Um, and it did cause quite a little uproar in my Instagram comments. People were like, this is also a Kentucky law. I was like, I know I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> anyway, love the support. Thank you. But the the Kentucky fishing laws definitely make sense. I think it's smart to have laws that... Um, you know, like control the amount that you can hunt or fish or whatever. But I thought it was interesting. I didn't know that many people were illegally fishing with a bow and arrow. So there you go, Kentucky. Oh, this one, a hundred percent, I think should be illegal. I think it's so terrible to do. In Louisiana, it is illegal to order food to someone else's house without their like knowledge and consent. So you can't, it's illegal to like prank 50 pizzas to get delivered to like Sam's house Uh, when he doesn't know about them, which I think is 
completely fair and absolutely should be illegal in every state. I think it's terrible that somebody because, A, you're messing with the business that is delivering the food and you're wasting their time and their money and their, you know, delivery people's um, energy. And like a lot of like the people oftentimes are going to have to pay for this and then they're going to waste food. It's terrible. All around is terrible. Good job, Louisiana, for making that illegal. But if you're like at somebody's house and you're in charge of ordering the pizzas, that's okay. (laughs) Okay, moving on to Maine. Maine has a really interesting one. There is a tiny part in Maine. One of my patrons is from Maine. Hi, Mara. Um, And she always tells me like about the crazy weather there and just but also like pretty and cool it is. I've always wanted to go to Maine. So finding out these laws was definitely interesting. In a tiny town in York County which is on the very southern tip of Maine, called South Berwick. There is one particular Dunkin' Donuts where it is like super extra illegal to park outside of it, which I think is very funny and very cool because people were just like totally negating the parking laws. Now, I live in Los Angeles where parking is notoriously very, very tricky. This Some of the signs that you guys will... I swear, some of the signs that you see on streets, it's like seven different metal signs, like can't park 10 to 12 on Mondays, but also you can't park eight to six on Tuesdays and you can't park any day after 5 p.m. And so it's so tricky to read. And I'm imagining that in places like small towns in Maine and stuff, parking enforcement is not as aggressive. But outside of this one South Berwick Dunkin Donuts, it is absolutely super illegal to park outside of it because people were taking advantage and ruining it for everybody. (laughs) Oh, and they almost passed a law like Georgia with the fried chicken. Remember that one? It's like, um, it's illegal to eat fried chicken with anything but your hands, but it's sort of like a joke law. They just like perpetuated it into existence. They, uh, Maine almost passed a law where it's illegal to put tomatoes in clam chowder, but that one didn't get passed, but I thought it was cute that they tried. Oh my gosh. Okay. Maryland. Maryland is one I have Not firsthand experience with the law, but I did spend a lot of time in Maryland. And this has to do with their oysters. Now, I love oysters. I could eat oysters, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, raw oysters. (laughs) Yum. That was probably sounded so gross if (laughs) you were just listening to this like in headphones or something. Um, Okay. Wow, I'm so happy to be doing this podcast again, you guys. I miss you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Anyway, in Maine, oysters are a super, super, super popular food. I, or I'm sorry, in Maryland. And maybe in Maine too, probably. They have a bunch of seafood. Anyway, in Maryland, they're super, super popular. I remember on a lot of Fridays, they would have uh, oyster happy hours where oysters were like 50 cents a pop. And you would just be like, I want 30 oysters. And it was $15 and it was amazing. Now, one of their laws that I think is really cool and really important is if you I think that this is like a personal kind of fishing law. I don't think it's um, for commercial fishermen because I I don't know how that would work. Personal, if you harvest oysters and eat them, you actually have to return the oyster shell to the bay that it's from to sort of like I don't think they repopulate, but I think it like breaks down and just like becomes a part of the ocean again, which I think is super cool. And I know is a mentality and belief and and thing that's existed in the world for millions of I don't know, millions, however long people have been around. Um, I know that that's a very common practice and I think it's very smart. So I'm glad that it's a law that we're trying to keep our oyster population happy. Oh, but it's also super illegal to turn the oyster shells into anything, especially like chicken meal or road construction material. So there you go. A little bit about oysters from Maryland for you. Massachusetts has one. Okay. Now, I I didn't disclaim at the top of this episode. I hope the disclaimer from last episode just carries over throughout all three of these. Some of these are like state laws. If you're just listening to the podcast, I'm putting air quotes. Some of these are state laws that have sort of just like been existing in the world for so long. But if you go look them up, it's hard to find or they're a little musty or it's like an urban myth or maybe they stopped being a law in like 1935, but people carry the tradition, whatever. One of these sort of gray area ones that I'm not sure if it's actually fully like illegal is in Massachusetts. But this one you can find everywhere. Massachusetts, apparently it is illegal to eat more than three sandwiches at a wake or a funeral like service, um, because 
it's at that point they consider it <laughs> they consider it feasting and no longer mourning, which I thought was so funny and interesting and honestly very fair. Here's one from Michigan. In Michigan, it is illegal to drink on a train or be drunk on a train like a locomotive in anything except a dining car that serves alcohol. Now, I thought this was illegal everywhere. But what's interesting is in Michigan, if they confiscate your liquor, you can then go get it back after 10 days. Like they give you like a little slip that says like, oh, you had, you know, a bottle of fireball. Don't know why you chose fireball on a train. Seems like it would upset your stomach. But you have a you have a quart of fireball and we're going to take it. And then you could go back with your little ticket and get your quart of fireball back. So just be extra careful on the trains in Michigan unless you're in a designated car. OK, in a town in Minnesota called St. Cloud, it is apparently illegal to eat hamburgers on a Sunday. Now, we are going to find it to be a running theme in a lot of these episodes that things are illegal on Sundays. And this goes back to a time in our country where it was very heavily Christian. I'm not saying it's not anymore. I'm not saying anything about religion at all. I'm just saying a lot of the laws back then were influenced by Christianity. And one of those was like on Sundays, it was the Sabbath and you weren't supposed to eat meat. So that's likely where this one on eating hamburgers comes from. But I just thought that was interesting that it's kind of stuck around. And so many of these laws, again, they're not like enforced. You're not going to have like police officers going around St. Cloud on Sunday, like looking for people eating a burger. But it's just one of those like weird little historical facts that you know I love. That's the whole show. You know, why am I said telling you you're listening? You get it. Oh, in Mississippi, this one is interesting. I don't know if you guys remember a while back, um, maybe like 10 years ago now, uh, the mayor of New York, Bloomberg, was trying to put a law in order that like portion sizes were sanctioned and like you couldn't sell above a certain portion size of things, which which like I I, I guess I understand the mentality of sort of, but like people have free will, they can get whatever size they would like. Um, anyway, in Mississippi, they very much disagreed with this law and they were like, we're not going to put any laws on portion size. In fact, on top of that, they were like, in fact, we're not even going to make it illegal to not list the calories because like in California, it's illegal to not show the calories in the food that you're purchasing from somewhere. So yeah, so that was like a thing that Mississippi was like, it's not really a law, it's sort of like an anti-law, but I thought that that was interesting that Mississippi was like, no, get out of here. Oh, in Missouri, Missouri has a really cool one. So in Missouri, it is illegal to run on the job if you are a milkman. This one is likely from a time where milkmen were the main source of, you know, dairy. And that's how you got your milk. A milkman delivered it to your house. And the reason it was illegal to run was because the glasses are bought. The bottles are glass. And if you ran, you were probably going to break a lot of the bottles and waste the milk. And, you know, now there's just a big headache for the consumer and the dairy farm that they're coming from. Thought that was interesting too. Nebraska's one I love. In Nebraska, it is illegal to sell beer in an establishment without a pot of soup boiling. I love this. This is a pretty common thing in a lot of places where um, you can't just sell alcohol without food. You have to have a very specific liquor license to have just a bar in a ton of places. And this is this is a law from back when you had to have a pot of soup boiling to make it like legal to sell liquor and beer, which I just love that old stuff. I think it's cool. Oh, okay. In Nevada, in a tiny town in Nevada called Nyala, it is illegal to buy drinks for more than three people at one time. So if you're at a bar and you went with like five of your friends, apparently you cannot buy a whole round. You can only buy drinks for three people at a time. Interesting. Oh, this one I love. Okay. In New Hampshire, it is illegal to take seaweed off of the beach. Now, I was so curious about this one. So when I was doing my little digging about it, there's a really solid reason. It's because New Hampshire only has like 40 miles of coastline. So that like habitat and that natural experience is so special and so precious that you can't go like just taking stuff away from it. So like you know, taking some seaweed from just 40 miles of coastline is like, could be detrimental. So I thought that was cool. Nice little preservation moment. So don't go stealing seaweed, New Hampshire. You hear me? 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Quick correction immediately. Only 20 miles of coastline. There's less than 20 miles of coastline in New Hampshire. I don't know where I got 40 from. Simply didn't look at this. Oh, this one is so weird and interesting. In New Jersey, apparently, well, something I found out from another patron, Amanda, is in New Jersey, it's not only a thing where you like don't pump your own gas, can't imagine. It's illegal to pump your own gas, apparently. I know that's not a food law. I have a food one. But I thought that's so crazy. Coming from California, that's like an insane thought. In New Jersey, apparently, this is another one that was kind of hard to find a definitive answer on. Apparently, it's illegal to slurp your soup in Jersey. Now, if I got to move to a state where pet peeves were illegal, I'd probably move to a state where pet peeves were illegal. I And if you're wondering what my pet peeve is, I will absolutely tell you. One of my biggest pet peeves in the whole entire world is when a restaurant has like a silly name for like its stuff. Giddy Goofy's Goober Town Mac and Cheese. Just say what it is. Just say what it is. I don't need to order the crazy town hula hoop ice cream sundae. I just want the ice cream sundae with hot fudge. Thank you so much. I will point to the menu. I will not say the name. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Anyway, that's my pet peeve. And if I could move to a state that outlawed that, I would. <laughs> oh, this one I thought was super weird, too. In New Mexico, in Las Cruces, New Mexico, which I think is this town that's like right, 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 right before you get into Texas, because I know I've driven through it before. Apparently, it's illegal to carry a lunchbox. And the reason for this is to, like, stimulate local economy and local restaurants and stuff. I don't know how enforceable it is. Maybe not everybody wants to buy their lunch every day, but I thought that was an interesting little like, boop, you know. OK, here is one that I for the life of me could not figure out exactly why, but I thought it was too interesting to not say um, in New York. It is illegal to walk backwards eating peanuts at a concert. However, that became a thing. I couldn't tell you. Maybe it's a distraction thing. Maybe people were getting knocked over. Who knows? But I certainly don't. They, oh, New York also has the ice cream in the back pocket law. So there's, I think, at least three or four already in this whole country that have that same law, which I love. Oh, okay. Here's our last weird law for this episode. It comes from North Carolina. It is illegal to serve alcohol at a bingo game in North Carolina. Sometimes it's not illegal to bring it, a little BYOB situation, but it is illegal to sell it at a bingo game. It's also apparently illegal to steal grease from restaurants in North Carolina. So if you've ever seen that Simpsons episode where <laughs> where Bart and Homer steal the grease from the Simpsons uh, elementary school cafeteria, now we know that the Simpsons don't live in Nebraska. Apparently they live in Illinois. I think that that's been debunked. Anyway. That's today's episode. I'm so, so happy we got to hang out, you guys. I really missed this. I cannot wait to do next week's. We have a bunch of weird ones in our final episode of our weird state food laws. And we're on our way to episode 50. Oh, that's so crazy. This is episode 49. So thank you so much for tuning in. It is such a joy to have you here. I love you. I love you. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Stay hydrated. Be kind to others and uh, check your blind spot when you're driving and make sure you're not driving in anyone else's blind spot. My mom always reminds me that when we're on the phone. Okay, love you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.